Okay, I've got my new book. I've got my new course. I'm ready to study English. But what do I do now? <laughs> what you need, my friend, is a plan and an English study routine. Let me help you. Now, I know many students, many of you, study on your own. No class, no teacher, no book. Great! Some students do go to class, they have a teacher, they have a book, but when they get home to study, they're not sure what to do. What do you actually do every day to study? Well, there are many different things you can do, and today in this video I'll show you a really simple 30-minute study routine that you can start straight away. This includes the kind of activities that I have used when I've learned French, Spanish and Chinese. In addition, in today's video, I want to show you how to create an effective study habit and tell you the biggest myth or mistake that students make about language learning. And I think once you understand this, everything will change, right? Also, I'd like to share with you some of the tools and technology that I use on a regular basis as a learner and as a teacher. I think that will help. If you want this routine, the tools, all the information in the PDF, just click on the link below in the description. You can download that for free. Right, let's get cracking. So, how do you create an effective study plan? First, commit and plan. To commit means to decide to do something and then to do it and stick to it. So first decide how many weeks you're going to study. It can be two, three, five, six, ten weeks. Doesn't matter. Decide and then stick to those weeks. When you've finished, you can do more, but you must have a plan, the number of weeks. Then decide the days, the time and the place of study. So maybe some of you can do Tuesday and Thursday each week, or others can say Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, I can study. Decide the days, decide the time, maybe it's early morning or late in the evening, but decide the time you're going to study and the place. Maybe in your office at work, maybe on the kitchen table at home, maybe in a coffee bar. Okay, So decide the days, the time and the place. And I recommend the same days, same time, same place every single time you study. Now, here's a tip for you. Although I'm showing you a 30 minute English study routine, if some days you think mm, I've only got five minutes, do five minutes. Never skip a session. You can skip a meal, but don't skip your English study, right? Five minutes is better than nothing. Having that regular contact with the, with the language, a bit like a friendship, the regular contact is so important. So if you can only do five minutes, do five minutes. Okay, the biggest language learning mistake that I see is that students, they see a word or a grammatical structure and then they think, oh yeah, I know it. But they don't really, right? It's a bit like seeing a bird landing on the tree in your garden and you go, oh yes, I see the bird. Yeah, great. I've got it. And then the bird flies away like the vocabulary and you go, oh, I don't have it. It's gone. <laughs> I've forgotten. Right? Teachers, you will know this, right? Because I'm sure you have students who say, yes, 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 I know. Third person singular. He, she, it with S on the verb. I know, I know. My teacher tell me every day. <laughs> My teacher tell me? Tells me. You don't know it yet, do you? You see, because language learning is not I see it, I know it. Knowing a word isn't just knowing it. 
To know a word and to have a word means that you understand the meaning, you know the form, you can pronounce it, you know how it's used, you've seen it in three or four different contexts, listening and reading, you've used it in at least three or four contexts, speaking, speaking and writing, and then you get the word. And the key is review, review, review to really make the word a part of you, right? That's knowing a word. So learning English, right? It really is a bit like going out with or dating a boy or a girl, right? There are seven steps. <laughs> One, you see them, but you've no idea who they are. Number two, somebody introduces you. Ah. And then three, you learn how they sound. You see who their friends are. Number four, you start to talk to them. Hmm. Number five, you see them in a different context and they behave a bit differently. And you think, oh, that's interesting. Number six, you get married. What, already? <laughs> and then you think, ah, oh, now I know them. Oh, but my friend, the fun is just beginning. You don't know them. And then 10 years later, number seven, you think you know them and you discover something completely new. It's just the same with learning English. First, you see the word and you have no idea what it is. Second, a teacher or somebody introduces you. Third, you then learn about them. You learn how they sound, pronunciation, the form. You see their friends or collocations. Um, then next, you practice talking. Number five, you see the word in a different context and go, ooh, it can be used in a different way. Number six, you get married. <laughs> and just when you think you know them, you discover an idiom with that word and you go, oh, something totally new. It really is the same. Listen, learning English words and grammar, it's a long-term process. It's like a marriage. <laughs> the more time you spend together, the more you listen and try to understand, the better your relationship will be. <laughs> Let's move on to the 30-minute English study routine. Right, let's have a look at the 30-minute English study routine. Now, a lot of courses and books um, separate the skills, speaking, reading, writing, listening. I personally prefer to integrate them, to study them together, because that's how they appear in real life. We often read and speak and write at the same time. Okay, so in this routine, there are three steps we're gonna follow. Number one, discover. Number two, practice. Number three, review. And I recommend about 10 minutes on each one. Number one, discover. So we're going to look at a text. You can either read or listen. In this example, I'm going to read or we're going to read. Um, the important thing is to have context. Try and avoid these lists of words or lists of synonyms that you often get on social media. They're not very helpful. Try and learn vocabulary in context, okay? So let's choose a topic. If you've got a book or, again, a course, you'll have lots of topics to choose. Otherwise, choose something you're interested in or something you need for an exam. I'm going to take photography for today, right? Photography. If you don't have materials, then go on the web and look for an article. Easy, right? You can Google it. If you're not sure, the first tool I'm going to recommend is to use ChatGPT. You can get it for free. Um, and you go in there and I went in and did this. I typed, hello, can you give me references of some interesting articles about photography or whatever your topic? And look what it came up with. I was interested in the seventh one about these photography projects to jumpstart your creativity. So I put that into Google and found this article. Now, it's a longer article. And as we're only studying for 10 minutes, discovering, I would just choose one or maybe two paragraphs to focus on. The first thing you'll do then is just read through from the start to the end of the two paragraphs without checking anything, just to get the overall meaning. 
and then go back and find or make a note of five topic related words. So this is vocabulary that's related to the topic of photography that can be useful when talking about photography. Just find five. Don't go through the text looking up every word that you don't know. It'll take you far too long and it's not useful. You're just focusing in on topic related vocabulary. So five words. For example, I looked at these and I picked out these words. Photography, to shoot, self-portrait, shutter button, the camera. Simple, right? Well, kind of simple. Now, obviously you don't know or you may not know all of these words. So useful tools, you can use Chrome extension, Google Dictionary. Google Dictionary on the Chrome extension is great. You just double click on a word and it pops up the definition and the pronunciation. Great. For online dictionaries as well, you can use, I recommend collinsdictionary.com or the Cambridge one, which is dictionary.cambridge.org. And they're both great. And you can look up words and phrases with that. Sometimes you, uh, you're looking up for two or three words because shutter, shutter button doesn't come up in Google Dictionary and in many dictionaries. So just take the phrase, put it into Google and see what comes up. I always double check with the images search because sometimes a picture is worth a thousand words, right? Now, as you can see, I've taken the, the web text and I've just copied and pasted onto a Word document to make it easy. But now I've picked out five words, just make a note of the word form. Is it a noun, a verb, an adverb, an adjective, and so on. And then make a note of the word friends or the collocations, right? What is the word that goes before and the word that goes after? The typical words that go together. For example, I was looking at portrait. I could see self-portrait is a collocation um, and taking a self-portrait to take a self-portrait, okay? So you've got the collocations. Then go back to the text again and underline or highlight the whole phrase with the collocation. So you're getting a whole phrase in context. Something maybe like this. I actually opted for spark your creativity. I thought that was interesting. To shoot something else, it involves taking a self-portrait to hit the shutter button and holding the camera at arm's length. So we've got nice phrases in context that now we should understand. We've discovered the language. The last step is a preparation step. Again, copy and paste. And then in that text, especially around the collocation phrases, just put a line. So blank out some words and put a line instead. This is called, for teachers, it's called a close. C-L-O-Z-E. -E. Um, and it's a way to remove words now. Later, we'll come back and test yourself trying to fill in the gaps. Those of you who follow my email list um, will know this is a kind of lesson I, I like to do a lot. And it's really useful for testing your memory and reviewing language. This is the end of the discover section. OK, next, practice. And for this, again, about 10 minutes. What we're going to do first is listen to the text. If you have a reading text here, in order to listen, there is an amazing tool you can use called Speechify. You can get it. It's uh, online. You can get a free version. And basically, it's a text to voice machine. So it will convert the text of any website into voice. The voices are great. You can choose if it's male, female, the kind of voice that you want. You can control the speed, take it higher or lower. You can do this either through Speechify once you've signed in. You, you can add the URL link or do it directly on the web page. So the first thing to do, we'll take our text here. Um, once you've signed into Speechify, you'll see this thing on any website. You'll see in the top corner, there's a little button. And if I press that, Look what happens. Seven photography projects to jumpstart your creativity. In this post, Jennifer Jacobs from Ifalls, come share some photography project ideas to spark your creativity. Amazing. So 
First of all, just listen to the text. Close your eyes. Don't lie back. (laughs) Sit back. (laughs) Don't lie down. Well, you could lie down. Sit back and just close your eyes and listen to the text. Absorb it. Listen to it. Then what we're going to do is go back to the text. And you remember those five key words? Just listen and repeat those words. The best tool for this actually is the the Chrome extension, Google Dictionary. Um, Double click the word, press the little voice icon, listen and repeat. Photography. 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 Notice the stress of the word, right? After that, once you're feeling comfortable, is we're going to repeat the phrases, right? The collocations and the phrases. I would use Speechify here. Just get it to play again. You can actually select the text you want it to speak out, play and repeat. The voice, the text to voice is so good nowadays, you're getting pretty close to natural intonation. So it's a great model. After that, we're going to extend it a bit. Rather than just repeating the collocation phrase, is change one word in that phrase. Okay. For example, we had spark your creativity. Change one word. Spark my creativity, spark his creativity, spark their creativity, right? That's it. Go through the other phrases and just change one word. This will help you control it and build your confidence. After that step is you then take that collocation and make a whole new phrase, something original that you create and just speak it out, right? First, speak it out. For example, spark your creativity. Um, I use classical music to spark my creativity. I like to go to a coffee bar and drink coffee to spark my creativity. Something simple like that. Just create, speak out some sentences using these phrases. After that, Do the same thing, but write out some phrases. You can do the same or new phrases and write them out. And if you're not sure if your phrase is correct, a very rough way to check is to put the phrase in Google and see what comes up. And if you've made a a mistake with a pronoun or or something or a spelling mistake, probably Google's going to flash it up and you can notice that. It's a very approximate way to get simple feedback. And that is 10 minutes, the end of the practice session. Third, review, 10 minutes. Do you remember earlier on you made a close? That was the text with the missing words. Now is the time to go back and try and fill in the gaps without referring to the original, just from memory, from your feeling, fill in the gaps and see how you do. Check your answer with the original text. In addition, you can then, from memory, try and write out the five key topic-related words that you wrote at the start. See if you can do it. Again, go back and check with your list. Thirdly, write from memory the five collocation phrases that you highlighted at the start. Compare with the original. You'll often find it very interesting. You make small mistakes on spelling or prepositions, things like that. This is a great way to review and consolidate your learning. And that's it. I would add a really nice idea. If you've got a text on photography, for example, creativity in photography, Take the title of the text and put it into YouTube and see what comes up. Looking for a video that is on the same topic that won't be the same, but will have related vocabulary, possibly. And just listen and watch the video. Again, it's not a study activity. It's just a chance to be exposing yourself to possibly some similar vocabulary um, in the same field or the same topic. It may not come up. There may be different vocabulary, but either way, it's still a great opportunity to be listening and watching something as opposed to just reading. 
right? Remember, all the different contexts are so important to our learning. And that is the end of the 30-minute study session. Discover, 10 minutes. Practice, 10 minutes. And review, 10 minutes. You can be a bit flexible with the timing, but that's it. And this, I think, can really, really help you study and learn more. Great. I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, if you did, give me a like. Um, do subscribe and turn on notifications to find about more, find out about more videos coming up. Uh, also, if you want to get the list of this routine and all the tools and information, there is a PDF. Just click on the link below in the description and you can download that PDF for free. Um, and you can start putting it into practice. Just remember to be a bit flexible, depending on your situation, adapt this to make it work for you, but be rigorous in your commitment and in your planning, okay? That's it. Enjoy your study as always. And remember, the secret is in the practice. I always say that, but it's true. But in addition, it's all about review, review, review. Make sure you're doing plenty of reviewing. That's it. Can't wait to see you in the next video. Take care, my friend. Bye-bye.